Welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Rudy Rodriguez. I'm the Deputy City Manager for the City of Cottonwood. And today I have a wonderful guest, uh, Bruce Mar Morrow, our Cottonwood Link and Links uh, Transit Manager. Welcome. Thank you, Rudy. And today we're going to talk transit. Um, one of the things uh, that, that people don't, under, don't know about uh, Cottonwood is that Cottonwood is one of the very few, if not the only community of this size that actually has transit has a transit system, and we've had that transit system for quite a number of years. Can you give us a brief history of the transit system for Cottonwood? Well, from what I've uh, understood and learned since I've been here, Cottonwood has had transit since uh, mid-80s, something around 1985. They started with one purple bus and, and were taking people where they needed to go at that point in time. Uh, it grew as time progressed, and today we've got uh, a fleet of 17 buses, and we run three fixed routes uh, through Cottonwood and uh, the Verde Village and Clarkdale. And then uh, we have a, what we call our commuter service, the Verde Links, between Cottonwood and Sedona. And that's been probably 10 years now that the uh, Verde Links has been running. You know, our, our system started off small with the purple bus, as you uh, previously mentioned. But you know, since then we've we've uh, we've acquired several partners. Clarkdale is one of our partners. Um, Yavapai County is is, is our right. partners, and our most recent one, of course, is, was uh, Sedona, with the Link System. Uh, and could you explain what the Link System does, uh, and then also what the Cottonwood uh, System does? Sure, the Verde Links is our connector to Sedona. It runs. Uh, from 6 o'clock in the morning now to 11.15 uh, in the evening. Uh, we just, uh, 1st of October, expanded our link service to include those later hours past the end of when our cat buses are, are running. We've added a shuttle service uh, to coincide with the later Lynx buses. And uh, as I mentioned before, we have the, the three routes that run uh, during the day for CAT, the blue line, the yellow, and the green line. Uh, those cover, uh, the red line covers uh, most of Clarkdale, Yavapai College, and in between uh, Clarkdale and Cottonwood, and up to the uh, library. The green line is what I call our, our business and shopping line. Uh, it will move move people from the library into Old Town and from Old Town up Main Street all the way out to uh, Walmart and then back into town again. The yellow line covers a lot of our, our seniors and uh, a lot of the, the apartment complexes in town. Uh, goes up through uh, a lot of the same route as the green line. Uh, goes down by Christian Care, uh, Cottonwood Village, Highland Square, and uh, all the way out to uh, the manor, and then back in through by Walmart again, and through the rest of the shopping areas. Now, I, I, I understand that, that uh, we have colors, co everything seems to be color coded, and it can be a little bit confusing for people. Um, is, is there some way that people, or some place people can look to find these things? Which routes are exactly, uh, go where, and exactly about what times? Sure. On our website, uh, the easiest w way to look at our website is uh, www.ride-cat.com. That'll take you right to our web page. On that web page, you'll find uh, the rider guides that give you the schedules and where the routes go. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond that, if you're at the library, our bus shelter outside the library has a big map on it that has all our routes, all the scheduled times. Uh, if you go into the library, we have our schedules uh, are there right inside the door. So the, we're kind of got them everywhere. If you happen to get on a bus, our bus drivers have schedules as well for both the CAT and the Lynx. You know, um, uh, besides that, I know, know that we've got an app for, 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 um, for the, the transit system. Can you kind of give everyone an idea of what that app can actually provide for, for our service, uh, clients? Sure, our app is called Route Shout 2.0. You can get it from the App Store uh, for Google or the uh, Apple Store uh, for iOS devices. 
and it works on uh, most smartphones and tablets. What it can tell you is uh, a couple of things. It can tell you where the bus is on the route, plus it can tell you when it's supposed to be at the stop that you might happen to be at. Uh, gives you a, a sort of temporary or, or uh, a look at, uh, it's gonna be here in approximately 10 minutes, say. And, and from that, you can figure out where you need to be to pick it up. It shows all the routes, and it gives you all the times for every route in that app. You know, it, it's kind of exciting, having, being one of very small communities that actually has a transit system. Um, you know, the transit system isn't just those fixed routes throughout Cottonwood and the link system. There's a lot more benefits to actually having the, 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 the transit system, uh, such as uh, our paratransit and other services. Um, could you kind of explain those for people who could possibly be able to use those services? Sure. Because we have fixed routes, the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act tells us that we also have to provide what they call complementary paratransit. What that means is that any time the fixed route is running uh, from 645 to 645, we also have to provide paratransit. Paratransit is f primarily for those individuals that have some sort of disability and cannot make it to one of our regular bus stops. So the bus will come and pick them up at their driveway. Uh, we do offer uh, limited door-to-door uh, -door service where the driver will actually come out and go to your door and help you from the, your door to the bus. Uh, for that service, uh, you need to fill out an application we bring you into the office for an uh, in-office interview with our ADA specialist, and from there it's determined whether or not you'll be able to use the paratransit service. You know, I think that the, the service, and I can, I can tell you're very passionate about it, and, and uh, you know, we're always looking for, for improvements on the systems, and I think we've got a wonderful system to start with. Thank you, obviously, to you and your staff. Um, but you know, we've, we've been looking at, at, at expanding the services that we have for, for the city of Cottonwood and for our, our partners, obviously. You know, um, recently, and you mentioned it, was that we have uh, expanded our services, uh, especially our late hour services, which is great. Um, uh, just to start off, what, what prompted the idea of expanding the services? In uh, conversation with the, the folks from the City of Sedona, the Sedona Chamber of Commerce and the Business Council, uh, we, we found out that there are needs that aren't being met, uh, primarily for employers to have employees get to and from work when it's, their shifts might end after the regular bus service ends. So we worked with the Sedona uh, City Council and uh, the chamber to determine when the best times for our buses to run in order to make sure that the employees can get both to and from work. Uh, in checking with the business council, we found out that most of the businesses are closed down by 10 o'clock. So we, we set our schedule up so that the last bus out of Sedona from the Sedona Municipal parking lot leaves there at 10.30 to ensure that those people that get off at 10 o'clock can get a ride back into Cottonwood, if that's where they came from. Well, well that, that's very, very good. I, I think the, the expansion of the system has been, has been a real plus for us. Uh, we'll continue talking about the expanded system when we get back. In the meantime, uh, we're gonna take a small break, and when we come back, we'll continue talking about the extended system and a couple of other items that are on our mind. Thank sure. you. This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit cottonwoodaz.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride. There are people who struggle with addiction and homelessness. 
Sometimes it may feel like there is nothing we can do to help. But there is. You can make a tax-deductible donation and help those in need transition away from homelessness. When you give someone a handout, you could actually be supporting an addiction. A better life starts with better health, especially for those living in the streets. Support solutions, not addictions. You can make a difference. Visit cottonwoodcares.org. Well, welcome back. We're here today at Inside Cottonwood. We're talking to our uh, Cottonwood Area Transit and Links uh, Transit Manager, uh, Bruce Morrow. And we want to continue to dis a brief discussion concerning the extended link service to the uh, city of Sedona. You know, Bruce, you mentioned that, that, that what prompted the, um, the expansion of, of the hours was uh, businesses and, and, and trying to get our people back and forth to work, uh, especially those late evening hours after their, their restaurants have closed and they're basically uh, needing to come home. Um, there, there's also, how do we get them, so we basically will be making tr additional trips in the evenings mm -hmm. to Sedona and we will be, because they're transporting uh, employees, their employees back and forth, which is a great idea. But then what do we do? Where, where do we, how do we get them back home? We get them to, I think, our transfer station over at the library. Right. Um, and, then, and then what happens from that point? Well, we've put together a, a bus service called the CAT Connect. And the reason why it's CAT Connect is it connects with the Lynx bus uh, at the library on those late evening hours and takes people uh, currently, we, we're taking them directly to their homes as a demand service. Eventually, when we get more riders, uh, we do have a route mapped out that will take riders then to one of the closest bus stops uh, where we can drop them off safely and they can get home from there. Uh, right now, we, we're not quite having, the, having enough people on those later buses to uh, facilitate moving into that that route service so you're able to you take employees um, you help get employees over to um, to their work early in the mornings uh, you transport them back in the afternoons and then also in the late evenings now this service isn't exactly for just employees anyone can actually catch a Lynx bus at any point in time am I correct And the late hours are not exactly just for uh, transporting workers. It's actually for anyone, tourists, uh, commuters, anyone who just wants to get on the bus. Am I correct with that? So it's sure. Okay, uh, it, it's open to the public. Uh, we do ask uh, for that late service that you meet the bus at the library. Uh, we have limited stops in Cottonwood, uh, the library uh, at Eighth Street, and at Circle K. Uh, are the only stops we have for the link service. So if you want to get on the bus to go over to Sedona maybe for dinner or to catch a movie, an early movie, um, or do a little shopping, the Lynx bus is a great way to do it now because we can get you there, you can have your dinner, and uh, perhaps if you have some wine, we'll get you back home so that uh, you don't have to worry about uh, driving while intoxicated. Uh, certainly, that that's always a, a real consideration. Uh, you, you know, it, it's it's always safe. It's a, it's an enjoyable ride. Uh, you know, um, my kids rode it for long for many years. I uh, went getting to school and back. Um, you know, it, as as we continue moving forward with with the link system, there's there's so many plans. We we actually uh, regionalize obviously because we do work with the county and and Sedona and uh, and uh, Clarkdale. Um, do you do you see the system expanding in the in the future? Do you see it uh, growing uh, further out in, into the county and maybe um, connecting to other places, uh, getting people, you know, to other locations? Well, we always have plans for expansion. Uh, one of the, the, the two places that we have yet to connect are Cornville and the village of Oak Creek. Uh, we do have plans in place for doing those expansions. Uh, we had thought at one point in time to go down to Camp Verde, but now that the Yavapai Apache Transit service mm -hmm. is operating, they make that connection from Camp Verde to Cottonwood, and then from there we can get on to Sedona. 
Um, so we still have the plans in place for, for connecting uh, Cornville and, and the village of Oak Creek. Uh, and we'd be happy to do that. Uh, there are a lot of people, uh, for example, that live in Cottonwood and work in the village of Oak Creek mm -hmm. uh, that would be able to take advantage of that kind of a service. Same with people in Cornville. They also have people that work in the village of Oak Creek. So mm -hmm. a connector service between Cottonwood, uh, Cornville, and the village would be uh, something that we want to strive for. You know, I, I know that these are these are all plans for the future and stuff, and and uh, uh, funding is always an issue. Um, to, to run a transit system is a very expensive proposition, yes. uh, one that the city of Cottonwood and our partners can't take on by themselves. Um, there are grants available for this. Can you give us an idea of, of who our grant partners are for this, this particular program? The uh, Federal Transit Administration uh, has grants available for not only rural uh, transit operators, but suburban and, and uh, urban transit operators as well. We operate with the help of the grant from the 5311 program. Mm -hmm. uh, that's administered through ADOT. And uh, with that funding, we're able to run the transit system we have here in Cottonwood and also the link service. Now, it, this is a matching program, obviously, uh, and, and this is where our, con our partners come in. They contribute money, the city count would contribute money, and you also have uh, fares that are, that are collected. What is the fare structure like? What does it take to get around town? Uh, what does it cost to get, to, to, to get on the links and such? Uh, mm -hmm. Can you give our listeners an idea of, of how inexpensive or how uh, and, and, you know, f it is to really ride this, this system? For a dollar and a quarter, you can ride anywhere in Cottonwood. Uh, you can get then a transfer to get on the Lynx or the Avapai Apache buses. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, if you're riding the Lynx alone, uh, one-way trip uh, from Cottonwood is $2. If you're in the city of Sedona and you need to get around Sedona, it's a dollar uh, per trip. Um, the Avapai Apache transit service has also uh, opted to share our uh, fare structure. So we can, if you need to get to Camp Verde, you can get a transfer from one of our buses to get on the Yavapai Apache bus. We have special fares for seniors, veterans, and students, which are half price. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's actually a little better than half price, uh, 50 cents. Mm -hmm. for, for seniors, students, and veterans right. to uh, get on the bus in Cottonwood. It's a dollar if you want to take it over to Sedona. And all those, all those fares and, and, and routes and, and all this information you're providing us is pretty much readily available in, at, at, on our website, on your website, am I correct? That is correct. And again, the bus drivers have the schedules uh, and route uh, times on the buses. The library has them, uh, the rec center, uh, finance department in Cottonwood and the city offices in Sedona as well as some of the, the uh, hotels and resorts that are along the, the route uh, uh, on 89A and 179. Yeah, now that you mentioned the, the routes and the hotels, um, I know we kind of strategically locate a lot of our, our, our bus stops um, and what we would call, I guess, high traffic areas or needed right. areas. Uh, can you kind of give us an idea of, of how we determine where we want to go ahead and put some of these stops? Basically, we take a look at where people are, uh, where there are large groups of people, uh, like apartment buildings and apartment complexes, uh, senior uh, centers where there might be a lot of residents, uh, and places like that. And then we take a look at where pe we think people want, might want to go. Uh, Old Town, for example, or uh, one of the, our more popular stops is Walmart. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. it, it is what it right. is. I mean, people want to go shopping, and right. they do a lot of shopping at Walmart, but we also have stops at uh, uh, Food City and the Safeway as well. So you can pretty well get to anything you need to get to. Are, do we, and we also have some strategic stops in near, near uh, doctors and hospitals uh, facilities, am I correct? Uh, 
Right. We have we have one stop that's right at the front uh, front door of the hospital. Okay. So if you need to get in, we have got that covered. Uh, the rest uh, is covered pretty much along Willard Avenue. Uh, we have a stop right across from uh, 450 South Willard, which is the primary uh, space right. for uh, Verde right. Valley Medical Clinic. Uh, and then all along Willard, at we have uh, three stops that are along uh, Willard uh, across from the hospital. Okay, good. Uh, we're going to take a small break here, and we'll come back and we'll continue discussing and kind of come to conclusion on uh, on the our transit system and our transit talk. Thank you. This is Bruce Morrow, Transportation Manager for Cottonwood Area Transit. Remember, we cover the entire Verde Valley in Sedona. Cottonwood Area Transit has you covered wherever you want to ride in the Verde Valley, all day, every day. Take Cottonwood Area Transit through Clarkdale, Verde Village, and from 26 locations in Cottonwood. With Verde Links, it's a quick and easy trip to Sedona every day. Don't forget our connectors to Camp Verde. Visit CottonwoodAZ.gov for Cottonwood Area Transit and take a seat. Let's go ride! There are people who struggle with addiction and homelessness. Sometimes it may feel like there is nothing we can do to help. But there is. You can make a tax-deductible donation and help those in need transition away from homelessness. When you give someone a handout, you could actually be supporting an addiction. A better life starts with better health, especially for those living in the streets. Support solutions, not addictions. You can make a difference. Visit cottonwoodcares.org. Welcome back uh, to Inside Cottonwood. We, we here with us. We have our transit uh, Cottonwood Area Transit and Links uh, Transit Manager Bruce Morrow, and we're going to be talking a couple of topics today. One of them uh, we've talked several topics today. One of the things we want to talk about uh, also is is our drivers. Obviously, these buses are not autonomous, so they don't drive themselves. So we have to actually have drivers available. And uh, with the long hours that we have uh, on, on the system now, especially with expansion, uh, it, you know, one of the things we, we have had issues before and we continue to have issues is trying to get um, drivers. Tell me your experience on, on how you got involved with it and then we can talk about uh, how we can uh, encourage people to drive um, for us. Well, I, I think I got into it like if you ask all our drivers, uh, at some point in time they thought, you know, it would be really cool to drive a city bus. Uh, mm -hmm. I got started in St. Paul, Minnesota, driving buses for the company there, and uh, found out I, I really liked buses, I liked transit, and, and uh, it became an opportunity to uh, learn about uh, transit systems in large cities. and. Obviously, I've been able to take that uh, and train to become a transit manager. Mm -hmm. uh, the opportunities we have at, at Cottonwood are, are pretty much the same. We have opportunities to, uh, for part-time drivers, and we have opportunities for full-time drivers. My, my thought is uh, if you've ever had a, a notion that you ever wanted to drive a transit bus, come and see us. We, we have openings available right now. You know, it, it's it's and you're absolutely right. We are always looking for for transit drivers, uh, both part time and and uh, occasionally we do have full time right. positions. And and I think a good start would be if you're interested in in it is uh, try it out uh, to come on down as a, as a part time driver. Um, give give us an idea of what the requirements are to to actually get in here because obviously I, they're. They're a little bit more stringent than 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 uh, most employees because they are uh, federal funds involved. Right. So, give me an idea of, of how, to, how how is it that you can, or what are your requirements to get in as a bus driver? Our basic requirements are you have to be at least 21. Uh, you have to have a clean driving record. Uh, beyond that, we will require that you obtain a Class C uh, commercial driver's license with a P, which is for passenger endorsement. Uh, beyond that, the city has added a requirement for a level one fingerprint card, 
which means we do a very extensive background check to make sure that our drivers are, uh, well, good drivers. Mm -hmm. um, we, we deal with a lot of uh, younger people. We deal with a lot of folks that are disabled, and they might be physically disabled, but there, we also deal with some that are, are a little mentally challenged. And, uh, you know, we have some autistic folks that we ride the bus. So we have a lot of variety of people that ride the bus that we want to make sure that the drivers we hire are going to be folks that will treat them with respect and dignity that they deserve. Right. When, you, when you're talking about, um, um, about having a clean driving record, roughly what does a clean driving record mean to you? To me, it, it means uh, no, no speeding. Um, we don't want people that have been picked up, for example, for DUI. Uh, we do random drug testing, drug and alcohol testing on all our drivers and our office staff um, because we all uh, participate in what they call uh, safety sensitive uh, work. Mm -hmm. um, so it, random drug testing is, is part of the, the uh, requirements that we have for our drivers. So, I'm interested. I want to go ahead and become a driver. Um, do I call you? Who do I need to contact at the city in order to be able to at least apply for it uh, if I have those qualifications that you just mentioned? Initial contact should be with our HR department. Uh, they have all the information on, on the requirements. Uh, if you look on the city website, you'll find a, a place on there where they have job postings. Uh, our uh, positions are all posted there, um, and you can call us. We'll talk to you. We like to talk to people about our buses. You know, it's it's always it's always great to to, to see. I, again, I, I I can't help but to mention that that uh, having having knowing your staff, knowing you, uh, it's it's you seem always excited with where we're going with with transit. Um, you know, we've got a lot of future plans. Uh, we do need drivers. Uh, if anyone's interested, uh, please make sure you contact our HR department. Make sure you contact Bruce if, if you need to, or any of the staff members there can give you a right. good idea. You know, um, obviously, how do you, how do you keep up with the communication? Obviously, the drivers are always going, uh, do they use cell phones or, or do we have radios? And who manages all of that? We, we do uh, have a lot of coming and going. Uh, our drivers uh, all have cell phones, uh, which, of course, they are not allowed to use while driving. Uh, but the buses have radios. Uh, we keep in contact with all our drivers through the radios. Buses have tablets that keep track of the, where, the routes and the passengers that we pick up. Uh, we can keep track of the buses through that as well. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we have a, a, a core of folks in our office uh, scheduler uh, and dispatchers uh, that keep tabs on, on our buses and are available uh, should there uh, mm -hmm. be a, a breakdown or some other emergency that comes up. Uh, our dispatchers are right there to assist. And if, it, if it's a breakdown, we'll get the tow truck out there. Um, if there's some other issue, we can get paramedics or the police there. Um, our dispatchers are very good at what they do. So obviously, uh, you know, it, it sounds like a kind of like a well-oiled machine, uh, and we have a lot of technology involved. I also know that uh, we're always upgrading our technology on our on our buses. Uh, and and uh, just briefly, uh, could you give me an idea of, of what we've got coming down the pike? I, I, I my understanding is that we've got uh, some new buses lined up over the next year or right. so. Uh, so if you give me a quick heads up on how we're doing with that. Yes, uh, we, we obviously we run a lot of miles, uh, especially on our Lynx routes. Uh, one bus on the Lynx route can run about 580 miles a day. Uh, mm -hmm. So we, we put a lot of miles on our buses, uh, and as such we have to replace them on a fairly regular basis. Uh, and, and that's determined by ADOT. Uh, they have a, a schedule and we keep watching the mileage rack up and as soon as it gets close to that schedule, we start talking to ADOT then about obtaining new buses. 
You know, uh, there, there are so many other topics we could talk about transit, uh, but you know, we are, we're running out of time today, and I want to thank you, Bruce, for joining us today. You're welcome. And uh, we, we thank you for joining us at our Inside Cottonwood, and we'll see you next time.